My name is Pete Goodell. I'm an Integrated Pest Management Advisor with the statewide IPM program with the University of California Cooperative Extension. And I've been asked today to share a few thoughts about what IPM means to me and what I think IPM needs to be doing. I want to start by saying that uh, to think of integrated pest management, you've got to always think of the ecosystem. This is a system approach to pest management, considering all things including the land, air, water, crop, social issues, uh, and especially maintaining productivity for the farmer who's trying to uh, grow food or fiber. The, one of the keys, or the key to integrated pest management, is the its dependence upon information. It is an information intensive approach to pest management uh, that, that requires uh, scientific based knowledge as well as years of experience in a particular area of expertise and discipline. One of the things to note when I talk about IPM, I'm talking about pest management, not pest control. Because when we're trying to manage, we're trying to manage that pest population uh, from reaching damaging levels and therefore reducing uh, the overall production and yield in a particular field. So therefore, we're not looking to eradicate, we're not looking to eliminate, we're looking to manage and manage below some economic level. So there are a number of things in pest management uh, that we look at in terms of components. It's the monitoring, we've got to know what's out there, we have to know how many there are, and also when we're monitoring for the pest, we have to know what other organisms might be there that's helping manage that particular pest. So looking at the field, understanding the biology, looking at the orchard, understanding what all is involved in uh, the ecosystem of that particular orchard. Another key in the elements of IPM is the use of economic thresholds, or what I consider action thresholds. Economic thresholds is the level of a pest that is causing damage and requires treatment. Uh, it's, it's not treating when the population is extremely low, and it's not waiting until the population has already caused you damage. These are based not only on solid research from a number of institutions over the years, but also from a lot of experience in modifying various economic thresholds to the uh, particular orchard or vineyard. And finally, integrated pest management uses an integration of um, multiple management or control techniques. So this includes cultural control, which is a selection, for an example, of varieties, of planting dates, of early harvest, anything to put the advantage to the crop and disadvantage to the pest. Biological control, uh, this is where we're trying to encourage mostly in our systems in California, conservation biological control, so we, we uh, support the indigenous natural enemies that act as the mortality break on any increasing population. I often tell my growers that if you had to replace all of the lace wings and ladybugs in your field that you're going to kill when you spray this broad spectrum insecticide, you would be spending tens of thousands of dollars in, repa in replacement costs based upon what the commercial value is. I look at natural enemies as an inventory and an investment you have already in the field. And finally, if we need to treat, and oftentimes we do, Chemical control is the method to which we can reduce the population immediately and prevent any further damage. However, using pesticides in general requires care, requires uh, understanding of the environment, of, the, uh, of, of food safety, and of worker safety. And in one of the things I always try to emphasize is choosing the material that does the most selective job and preserves as many non-target organisms as can be, including natural enemies and pollinators. I mentioned that IPM is a information-based and information-intensive system. In many ways, we're replacing our time in the field with expensive inputs that might be needed to control unnecessary uh, pests or allowing the pests to get to a stage where we need to do some expensive interventions. This information is based upon research. It's based upon applying that research to real situations. It's adapting and adopting those techniques to local conditions. And it's listening to the farmers and to the pest control advisors as to how a particular pest management practice will fit into the existing system. 
And I cannot emphasize this enough in my 30-year career that successful implementation always occurs when we work with the farmers and the PCAs to find out how they're managing their crops now and how we can improve that management through IPM by providing tools that fit into their existing practices.